Let me start with a little experiment. This is a regularly sized sheet of paper. How many times do you think you can fold this by half, turn it 90 degrees, fold it by half again, turn it 90 degrees, and so on? What do you think? Seven? Eight. Eight. 16. Whoa. OK, let's give it a try. One, two. Three, four, five, getting harder, six, six times. I think we've reached the max here. Let's do the second part of this experiment. Imagine I could do this 50 times. How thick do you think the stack of paper would be? One kilometer? That's ambitious. It would actually have a height comparable to the distance from the Earth to the Sun, 150 million kilometers. And if we folded it one more time, it would even reach to the Sun and back. What you've experienced here is the power of exponentials. This is how our world is developing currently. It is accelerating, it is nonlinear, but that is not how our brains are wired. We can only think and thus make our predictions based on linear assumptions. We as humanity, as organizations and individuals, are facing the largest change in human history. So a relevant question you may ask yourself is, can we actually manage this change that we're experiencing? And my answer would be, of course we can, if we use the right approaches. So today, I would like to share a tool with you that we've developed that can guide us through the 21st century. We call it hybrid thinking, and it combines four of the most powerful approaches to guide human change. Now, let me introduce the first out of four steps coming from the 20th century with a linear and mechanistic mindset. Nothing has prepared us for the crazy complexity and the change we're currently witnessing. So we need to look for inspiration outside our behavioral patterns and beyond what we're used to. So my first advice is look at and learn from nature. Because if we are not prepared for this complexity, then it makes so much sense to look at biological models, because they are. They are amazing adapters. Now let me put this into context for you. Life on our planet is 3.8 billion years old. 3.8 billion! That is an incredible track record of success. Now, our planet is even older, 4.5 billion years. And I know these numbers sound simply astronomical. So let me use a trick to wrap our heads around this. Let us compress the age of our planet, 4.5 billion years, into one calendar year, 12 months. We all have an understanding of how long that feels, January till December, right? If we do this, then planet Earth started to exist on the 1st of January. And it took until the 25th of February that we had the first life on our planet. And it was not before September that we had the first sex. No, no romantic fantasies. We're talking about very, very simple stuff here. And then, last month of the year, December 1st, that's when life made its way onto land. And then came Christmas. That was really not a holiday for the dinosaurs. <laughs> they would extinct then. And it took until the last day, December 31st, when Homo sapiens, so essentially us, came into play. We are less than half an hour old. And when we consider the pinnacle of evolution, the industrial revolution, from the steam engine to the smartphone, that is less than two seconds old. Two seconds. That is nothing, considering the wealth of innovation potential we currently do not use. The good news is there is a method that makes this knowledge and that potential available, and that's called biomimicry. It's a process where we look at nature and abstract the design principles, taking it to human innovation. Let me give you an example. 
What you see here is a humpback whale. And if you have a closer look at the leading edge of its front flippers, you'll see that they are not straight. And that's in stark contrast to what we build. Airplanes, for instance, their wings are always straight to avoid turbulences. Now, a marine biologist by the name Frank Fish, no kidding, <laughs> he really made his name a profession, he investigated the whale fin structure scientifically in the wind channel. And he figured out that these little tubercles, that's what these bumps are called, actually cause turbulences. But this is anything else but a disadvantage. These turbulences created actually reduce the drag of the animal and allow it to navigate in the water. If we now transfer this design principle into our design and build wind turbines, then they become much more energy efficient, and the savings in material and energy are enormous. Now, this has been a product innovation example, but really anybody can use biomimicry. Just look at nature and understand and apply the design principles. So biomimicry can equally be applied to rethink our processes, to redesign our organizations. We have been working on urban mobility challenges using biomimicry, on agile organization design, on self-organizing teams. All that is possible, but it's pretty much untapped so far. But regardless how great this sounds now, the biomimicry approach alone is not enough. We can have the smartest strategies. If we don't apply them, they simply don't matter. So we also have to impact human behavior. So my second advice is use more of our mental tool that is best suited to make us take the right decisions and manage complexity. And that is intuition. Now, I'm a neuroscientist. I can tell you there's a ton of information about how our brain works. But our current culture is directly opposed to what our brains are good at doing. Our brains are capable of far more than what we have conditioned them to work like. Let me give you a crash course of how our brains work. In a nutshell, your brain is a split personality. You have one guy, he's the analytical one. He argues based on facts and numbers, he's responsible for language. Now this guy is amazing when the risks and outcomes are predictable and the context is relatively simple. But he's very, very slow. And he's increasingly taking the wrong decisions in a world that is not predictable and non-linear. Now, luckily, there is a second guy. This guy is quite different. He's the agile one. He's the associative, creative personality within you. He is using intuition, and he is responsible for empathy, for trust, for decision-making. Now, this guy, the Agile one, he is perfectly suited for the complex and wicked challenges with unpredictable outcomes. And he's very, very fast. In fact, we don't even realize him working because he's working now as subconscious. Now, these two guys, they are known as systems one and two in neuroscience. And we have overused and overrated the slow guy, which is the cortical areas of our brain for centuries, and we need to trust the fast guy, which is the limbic system, the much older part of our brain, way more today. Just because the slow guy is increasingly not capable of managing reality alone any longer. Now, the point I want to make here is that intuition is not only needed, it actually even kicks in automatically beyond a certain threshold of complexity. So let me show you how strong your system one, the agile guy, really is. It is actually capable of overriding your conscious brain. What you see here is a rotating hollow mask. You know that it is hollow, and your eyes tell you that it is hollow. No, yet, no matter how hard you try, you will not be able to see it as hollow. As soon as the features of the face show up, your limbic system tells you that faces always stick out. And since this is based on two very powerful mechanisms, namely intuition and empathy, your limbic system simply overrides the sensory and rational input coming from your eyes and your cortical areas. So please, embrace intuition, use it. Learn to trust your inner voice more. 
allow the creative and associative parts of your brain to work together with the analytical ones. This combination, this hybrid, that is the key for the 21st century. And importantly, create conditions that are conducive to creative work. And that leads me directly to my third advice. Connect and co-create. Make use of the network effect. Understanding the brain mechanisms will help us to guide change that is people-driven, but individuals alone will fail to transform ideas and organizations. Don't try to figure it out all by yourself. Meet and engage with others. Don't even think you have to know all the answers. You actually can't. So collaborate and design positive sum games. Use the power of emergence which is achieving more than the simple sum of the individual parts. Think of collaboration as a tool to harness that emergence. Think of Wikipedia. Models like these have been revolutionary and hugely successful because they are constantly evolving open systems of exchange and collaboration. What we are witnessing is the rise of a collaborative working culture of network and cloud intelligence. And that is exactly the way how our brains work. So what we're doing is we're connecting the brains of many to a collective superintelligence. And to make this happen, we need new methods of working together. Methods that reinforce self-organization, iteration, and most importantly, a culture that embraces failures as learning opportunities. And that's exactly what we're seeing in many successful startups and the new economy. Various agile methods like design thinking, lean startup, scrum, methods that are user-centered, that are iterative, that are co-creative, that support a work culture that is based on people, on trust, on sharing. And they leverage this powerful combination of talent, knowledge, passion, impact, and technology. And that is what digitalization is really about. Now, to create lasting impact, though, there's one final ingredient missing. And that's my fourth advice. Think in ecosystems. And when I say ecosystems, I mean all of these things. Think of your family. Think of the organization you're working in. Think of the services you're providing within your organization, whatever it is. Have a look at it and start seeing it as an interconnected web of things. It's a life. They are all interdependent elements. And taking this perspective will help you to get rid of this mechanistic mindset and make you understand that doing one thing anywhere in the system will have an impact on the other parts as well. We have to move from the primacy of efficiency to that of systems health. So the fundamental question is, how do we build viable systems? Systems that are resilient, that are sustainable, that are scalable, systems that can adapt. And the answer is, think in systems. Design with these interdependencies in mind. Design for value creation. Design for circularity. A great example for circular design and the rise of a circular economy is light as a service. Now, the difference here is that you as a user don't ever buy a light bulb again. Instead, the light as a service company who actually designs and operates the system is responsible for maintaining it, but also for replacing and recycling anything that breaks. And that changes the entire game. Since you as a user only pay per hour or on a subscription basis, suddenly the provider has a strong interest in keeping the energy consumption low because he's paying the electricity bill. Now, what happens is that the light bulbs last longer, they are more energy efficient, and importantly, the resources remain in the hands of those who know what to do with them, the providers. And because they can recycle the materials, they design for disassembly. Because it's much cheaper to use materials you already have. So the entire system became much smarter and much more sustainable. And here we are full circle, because here we're back at biomimicry. That is exactly the way nature runs her systems. They are all circular. There's no waste produced. 
and there's always value created in the system. We are living in an era where boundaries disappear and pretty much anything hybridizes. Reality and virtuality, man and machine, biology and technology, for good and bad, and we know that. This new era, the hybrid era, requires an entire new mindset and a new approach, an approach that we call hybrid thinking. It brings people and nature back into the equation because that is the only way we can manage our future. This new hybrid mindset combines the four most powerful approaches that can drive change. Biomimicry, the way nature works. Neuroscience, the way our brains work. Agile design based on people, the way networks work. And systems and circular design, the way systems work. It allows us regardless if we are leaders of organizations or individuals within society, to redefine what we do. It is empowering people and designing organizations with a 21st century mindset that is viable. What I've shared with you today is a tool that helps you to find the solutions to the challenge of our time. Regardless which challenge you're facing, big or small, remember these four steps. Learn from nature. Use your intuition, connect and co-create, and think in ecosystems. We are amidst a new stage of human and planetary evolution. It is our mission to make sure that the future we design is one that is livable. We have all the tools needed to make this a success. Let's make sure we use them. Thank you.